Hello, Adam here. I want to share with you some more advanced or hidden away Adobe Lightroom secrets for editing your RAW files. These have now become second nature to me in Adobe Lightroom, and I think have made my editing and what I can do with the program a lot better than it was compared to just a few years ago. We're going to edit this image into this. I think a lot of people, when they click develop and start editing their pictures, tend to hang around just fixing the exposure, tweaking the contrast, playing around with the vibrance and the saturation, and that's it. Or even worse, they don't even do that, and they just select an Adobe preset, and that's it. Let's have a look at the more advanced, or hidden away, second level features of Adobe Lightroom, which I think will open up so many more opportunities for using the program to you. First, ignore the histogram. There's no such thing as a good or bad histogram. And are people wowed by a good looking photograph or are they wowed by a good looking histogram? Of course, it's the photograph that matters, not the histogram. So I tend to close the histogram away whenever I see it's open. A little bit of background. I took this photograph of the COVID Memorial Wall in London during June, 2023. It was a wonderful summer's day to be in London. Uh, on my Leica M11 with the 28mm f1.4 Summerlux lens. The very first thing which I notice about this photograph is that I was holding the camera slightly rotated and skewed off at an angle, so it's upset the horizontals and verticals of the photograph, which obviously affects um, where you're looking and uh, the power of the picture overall. So the very first thing which I'm going to do is use Adobe Lightroom's Guided Upright tool. You can find that under Transform, and it's this icon here. But we don't even have to click it. All we have to do is press Shift T, and Adobe Lightroom's AI will rotate and re-skew the picture so that now the horizontals and the verticals are correct, and the picture's already stronger straight away. Let's head back up to uh, the initial editing uh, controls. I want to restore a bit of the detail in the leaves over here. So, uh, because obviously the light was shining through these and so it's blown out a little bit. So I'm just gonna drag the highlight slider down. So a bit of a rule which I always follow is when editing, when I get it to a level which I think look, looks good, I push it back by 50% because it's very easy to overdo controls in Lightroom and end up with pictures that are just over edited. So whatever I end up doing, I push it back by 50% and I'm happy that way. That just seems to work for me. Next step, I want to bring up the exposure a bit in the shadows. So let's just push that up a little bit, and following our rule, bring it back. There. Now I've pushed up the exposure in those shadows. When it comes to editing color, I think most people just use the vibrance and the saturation tools here. But these are universal. In this case, all I want to do is make the reds and the blues stand out a little bit more. So. I'm gonna scroll down to the color mixer and I'm gonna push up the saturation of the reds. And notice that's only affected the saturation of the reds. I'll do it again with the blues. There we go. Maybe a bit much, so I'm going to bring it back down. There is a bit of yellow sunlight hitting the leaves up here and I want to make that stand out a little bit more. So using the luminance slider, I'm just going to push that up a little bit. There we go. If you're wondering what the hue slider does, that will edit and uh, help you correct colors at a channel level. So as an example, I'm gonna use the purple one here and notice what happens to this lady's headpiece. There we go. But notice we're not actually affecting any other color as we're doing this. Now I've got no need to make this edit to the picture, so just double click that 
and it'll reset. Now, let's have a look at masking. This is one of my favorite hidden away tools of Adobe Lightroom. I'm just gonna select that. If you're a landscape shooter, you might actually just want to use the automatic mask out of the sky because that will let you select just the sky and then fix the exposure of uh, the sky without affecting the exposure of anything else in your image. It's actually really cool. But today, we're going to grab the linear gradient mask and I'm going to follow the light coming into the picture here. Now I'm gonna take it to about there. Because this is a gradient tool, we get to select where the gradient starts, where its midpoint is, and where it would have and where we want it to have faded out. And what I'm actually going to do in this case is create a really nice evening look by just pushing the white balance control for just the area which I've masked up towards the yellows. And then I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit. Maybe push uh, the tint up a bit. Come back down to here and push the saturation of the orange up a bit as well. Maybe take it down a little. Tweak that yellow. Move the yellows towards the orange a bit, if that's what we want to do. And then bring the highlights back down a little bit more. And we could push the saturation up a little. So now we've got a nice bit of orange light affecting just around here. Let's just drag our midpoint down a bit just to make that affect a little bit more of the picture but remember don't overdo it it's always very very easy to overdo these things now I want to contrast this orangey look that we've got with a nice blue look to come up uh, here to really create some uh, to, to really create a bit of a visual contrast in color going on and a bit of a visual contrast in color temperature going on in the picture. So again, I'm going to select linear gradient and I'm going to select up towards uh, there. And so this is where it's going to be the most powerful. This is the midpoint and this is uh, where it would have, where we want it to have tapered off. And I'm going to use the white balance again to shift that towards a blue. Okay, so now we've actually got the, co uh, the color contrast that we like going on. Let's get back into main edit mode. Just lift the shadows a little bit more because you don't want to crush blacks or crush dark areas because that will affect your image when you want to get it to a print. You do want to be able to see into the detail of everything that you want to be able to see on a print quite well on a screen because when printing works, um, one layer of ink on another layer of ink tends to dull the exposure of the picture a little bit. So we don't want to crush anything. So taking a step back now, overall, I'm happy with where this is going, but I may just want to fiddle around a little bit more with the luminance of the oranges a bit more to add a little bit more contrast in them. I may want to push up the saturation of the yellows. And if I really wanted to, I could enhance that blue that I've brought in by pushing that up a bit more. But I don't really want to overdo that yet because it's possibly starting to overcook the picture. I do want to bring in a little bit more saturation on the green, particularly in these leaves, which I've done there. But I'm going to bring that back just following my golden rule. And if I lift the luminance of the green, as you can see, I now actually get a little bit of a nice um, glittery look happening on the leaves over there. It's really, really nice. So 
Maybe I will just push the saturation of that blue a little bit more, just because I really, really like it. And I'm gonna push that red saturation a bit more, but just to make sure it'll be all counter print, just lift the luminance a little bit more. So the next uh, hidden away feature, which I'm gonna show you, and fair warning, I think a lot of people tend to overuse this, is the sharpening. So I'm just going to select an area that I might want to sharpen up a little bit. And I'm just gonna push it a little bit. And then I'm just going to check a more neutral part of uh, the picture, even an area that's a bit out of focus. And what we're looking for is potential artifacting that's come in from over sharpening, because that just tells us that we've done it a bit too much. I'm not seeing it here. So we're okay at 60, but I'll just show you what that artifacting could look like. So if I push that all the way up to 150, you see how you get that artifacting coming in. So let's just bring this back down to about 60. And there we go. Another feature you may want to have um, a bit of a look at is the vignetting. And you can use vignetting if you want to really control your focus point of the image. I think in this case, the focus point uh, of this lady reading uh, the hearts on the wall is actually quite good because of the use of color in the picture. But if I really, really wanted to enhance it a bit more, I could use the vignetting uh, tool, which will just darken the corners a little bit and draw our attention even more to it. But I do tend to think that that gets overused. And in this case, I really just don't need it. So. One of the most important points to remember when editing your images is don't overdo uh, your editing. It's very, very easy to overdo, your uh, to overdo your editing. Don't overdo your editing. Okay, so that's how we got from the original image to this using some of the hidden away Adobe Lightroom features, which I really love. Um, I really encourage you to explore uh, these a lot more and explore some of these more advanced menus and settings. You will probably find that your uh, the opportunities for editing your images are just going to expand at infinite levels because there's just so much to discover in Adobe Lightroom.